Hello everyone, MP Hater here, and welcome back to my Newcomer's Guide to Dark Souls Remastered. This is part four. So in the last episode, we ended up killing off the Bell Gargoyles. Uh, we also ended up getting our weapon, our Claymore, leveled up to plus five. Which is what I would recommend that you do um, for, again, the playthrough. That being said, you do not have to have it leveled up yet. Um, we're not really getting into any areas or levels yet where the uh, damage output is going to greatly succeed the Drake Sword. But I would start, you know, planning towards that uh, if you are, you know, following along with uh, my playthrough. That being said, we got a couple of uh, things we're going to head towards. Uh, we're going to go back to the Undead Asylum. And we got a couple of items that we need to get. <clears throat> we need to get a Crest Shield, which is going to be uh, basically a replacement for this shield. Uh, it does better um, reduction of magic damage, which will be important for the Moonlight Butterfly boss fight. And then we're also going to get the Rusted Iron Ring, because we're also going to uh, tackle the uh, Hydra. Uh, in fact, we're going to tackle the Hydra first. Uh, for starters, though, you can come talk to this guy. Let him know that you rung the first bell. He'll be a little surprised. Anyway, with that, we're going to go ahead and head up this path. Go past Petrus. And we're going to start going up the elevator, but we're actually going to drop off the elevator. About right here. We're going to roll down here. And hop off on top of the building that Petra's in inside to grab the undead asylum key. Now you might remember the locked door behind the first enemy that we parried in the game. Um, we're actually going to be going to that door now. But to do that, we have to get back to the Undead Asylum. So we're going to head back up this path again. And we're going to drop off this time again. But now we're going to go all the way up the staircase. And you'll want to sit in the, or curl up, I should say, in the nest. Now, once you're here for like 15 seconds or so, the uh, crow or raven, not sure which, uh, will come to get you, and, the, and they'll deposit you back at the, uh, back at us, the asylum. Alrighty, so we are at the asylum. Things have changed a little bit since we uh, last came here. There are some more dangerous enemies. These things, for example, I don't like these guys. Their frenzy attack is particularly damaging. That, that right there. Stay away from that. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come out over here. And this is Snuggly. You, you, give me warm. Give me soft. So, kind of the idea behind this is you're supposed to poke around through your uh, inventory and figure out what items would be considered soft or warm. Um, and, for example, if you highlight the sunlit, me sunlit metal and I press X, I can see that this says the faintly warm metal. Uh, and then, of course, if you head down and look at things like the rubbish, well, that kind of looks soft. So... If it looks like it's soft, or if it looks like it's uh, warm, um, she'll probably take it. So um, there are many, many items that you can trade, but the big, the ba basic idea is that you should only ever drop one item. In addition, she'll only take one item um, of a given type, uh, basically per playthrough. So, for example, I'm going to give her a sunlight medal, but she will not take any more sunlight medals. It's also important that you don't drop more than one of an item. Because otherwise you will lose all but the one item. So we're going to go ahead and drop a Sunlight Medal. And quit the game. You could also leave, you know, the area if you wanted to and come back later and she'd trade. But this is the fastest way to do it.
So she will now trade you. This is going to give you a white titanite chunk, which is an upgrade material. We're also going to give her a uh, cracked red eye orb. And this is going to give us two purging stones. And then we're going to go ahead and give her the rubbish. Now she takes a whole bunch more stuff. If you're interested in the list, uh, you can go online and look at the wiki. I'll put it in my, um, what do you call it? Uh, the video uh, description, uh, if you are interested to look at the list. Uh, that being said though, um, these are the only three items that we have that are worth getting right now. Uh, later we will come back to Snuggly again for some more trades, but for now we're gonna go ahead and move on. So we're heading in here, um, real important, do not step in the center of the arena yet, um, because there's another boss battle here. And we are ill prepared for it at this point, so we will be coming back through here a little later, but for now, just stay away from the center. And you'll also notice that these enemies do a little bit more damage than they did before. So in here, we're going to make a left. You can rest at the bonfire if you want to, but I don't want to respawn the uh, enemies if I can avoid it. Unfortunately, our friend, the unnamed knight, and actually I should, shouldn't say unnamed knight. He is named in the game, just uh, I think it's in item descriptions. He is Oscar of Astora. Anyway, we're going to come over here, get this guy to follow us. In fact, I want to say that maybe it says Crest Shield that has the description of him. So we'll get him to follow us. Come on, both of you. Come get me. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get them to kind of follow me up this path because, oh, he's already dead. Well, that was fast. So if you're having struggles with them, you can kind of come up here, let the boulder get rolled down. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to get them in this hallway, um, because what will happen is only one of them will be able to come to you. And if the Black Knight gets in front of Oscar, what will often happen is uh, the Black Knight will end up getting uh, backstabbed uh, repeatedly by the uh, by Oscar. So. Otherwise, they'll often kill each other, so I kind of keep them right here until they until they kill each other. Um, and then whoever survives... Are you not coming back down? Anyway, whoever survives, I usually take down with me uh, downstairs. Okay. And hey, we got a sword. That's cool. Now, uh, if you actually die, by the way, um, again, uh, Oscar is guaranteed to drop this item. It'll actually be in here if you happen to die during the fight. Otherwise, though, we get the Crest Shield. So the Crest Shield is one of the best shields in the game. It gives us still 100% physical uh, damage reduction, but it also gives us 80 reduction on magic and that's going to be really effective against the moonlight butterfly boss which we're about to face that being said we can pretty much dodge most of the attacks but there is one attack i would say that's um particularly difficult to dodge so uh, i'm going to go ahead and equip that for my main shield going forward and then we're going to go ahead and head up here Because we need to go get the rusted iron ring. That'll help us deal with uh, water. It allows us to traverse water without treading water. So there are two of these enemies now. Again, both pretty easy to parry. Hit 
Oh, I don't know how I missed that. Eh, whatever. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and head through here using the key that we found on the roof of the building um, that Petrus was in. And then we're gonna grab the rusted iron ring. And now we've got all the stuff that we need for this area. Uh, we will be coming back here later to fight the uh, the demon that's at the bottom of the bro. Uh, base basically, it's at the bottom of this broken out area. Again, don't 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 step in the middle here because we're not uh, prepared yet for that fight. And you can hear it rumble. And we're back to finally shrine. So there are two ways that you can do this next part. Usually when I'm not playing for the sake of a walkthrough, I actually go through the undead berg first. And what I do there is I take um, the first tower that we ran into. That's the one right before the um, Taurus demon dos boss, boss, Taurus demon boss. And uh, what I would often do with that is I would kill off a guy named Havel. He drops a really nice ring. And then I would go ahead and head to the, um, the Hydra from there. However, that does, at this stage of the game, require the Master Key. And because the Master Key is, you know, not a guaranteed drop, I am going to go the traditional route uh, to reach that place. Which means we're going to head back to Andre. So again, level up if you've got the souls for it. And then we're going to go ahead and head back to Andre. Again, now's a chance for you to start doing some farming. Still don't quite need this weapon to plus uh, uh, to plus five, but we're getting there. I would say before we head off to the Capra Demon in the lower undead burg. I would make sure to have your claymore up to plus five. All right, so we're going to go ahead and head down. And oh, I forgot to grab his gesture earlier. So he got a gesture. And then he's also got the repair box. And I mentioned before that he sells it cheaper than the undead merchant. So I'm going to go ahead and buy it now since I got the souls. Uh, no rush to buy it, by the way. You can buy it now. You can buy it later. Eventually, we're going to go ahead and buy um, all three of these items. Uh, the Crest of Artorius will open up a, a gate that we're about to uh, run by. Um, and then uh, we, of course, have the ability to reinforce our gear at a bonfire. Later, we'll start getting farther and farther away from this guy, and it'll be a little bit harder to find people to kindle our stuff, and, uh, I'm sorry, not kindle our stuff, upgrade our stuff. So, um, definitely a good idea to buy these eventually, but, uh, not any rush right now. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and head down. So this is a Titanite Demon. He has, obviously, electrical damage, lightning damage. That he does and if you've ever seen the movie the one with jet lee this is a lot like that so there are a bunch of these things inside the world and whenever you kill one of them all the other ones get stronger if you're uh, in the movie the one basically there's uh, one version of jet lee who's going from universe to universe 
and every time he kills one of his counterparts, uh, he gets uh, a, a, basically a strength boost, as well as all of the other versions of him get a strength boost as well. So that's basically this guy's story. Uh, this guy does not respawn, by the way, though there is one of these t uh, Titanite demons that do respawn uh, later in a place called Lost Isolith. That being said, though, he has a left swing. He'll also do a right swing. Um, if you're on the left side of him, his tail will also get you. Uh, I recommend kind of staying between his left shoulder and his tail. He will also occasionally jump up into the air and then do a ground pound with his weapon. And then finally, he'll also occasionally do a grab attack. So that's kind of his uh, his main attacks. So he, deal he, he doesn't do all that much damage right now, but he has a massive amount of health. So it's going to take a whole bunch of hits to deal with him, but right now he's not that bad um, damage-wise. There's his jump. And his pound. So even that, which is other than his grab attack, is probably the most dangerous attack. Doesn't really do that much. But don't worry, that's the grab attack, by the way. Don't get it. Don't get hit by that. So he will always drop Demon Titanite. He has a chance to drop his weapon. Not a very good weapon, though. Uh, so the Demon Titanite is going to be used for upgrading boss weapons. So um, later we're going to start running into bosses that drop their souls. And we can trade that along with a plus 10 weapon in order to... Uh, and you'll have to actually trade them to a giant merchant. A, gi a giant blacksmith, sorry. In uh, Anne Orlando. And he will give you basically a uh, boss weapon in return. And these Demon Titanite can be used to upgrade boss weapons. Anyway, um, you can fight him if you want to. You do not have to fight him now. Um, but I think he's easy enough. He just has a crap ton of health. Um, and with 10 SS Splash, you should be able to nail him pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and head up and fill back up my Estus flasks. And then we're going to go ahead and head down into the dark root areas. So dark root garden first, and then we're going to head to the dark root basin. So we're going to head left here, and we're going to run into this guy. This is kind of the attack of the bush, people. So he has some whip attacks. He'll do a single-handed whip, a double-handed whip. He'll sometimes do it horizontal, sometimes do it uh, vertical. Uh, that little attack he just did where he puts his hands up into the air and shakes his arms, that's a grab attack, and it'll do you for like a good half of your health. So that's his only particularly dangerous attack. A couple of stabs are going to be fine, usually to kill these guys. That attack. Stay away from that. And then uh, they have a chance to drop uh, three different versions of Moss Clump. So the blood kind, like we have here, uh, this one's good for bleed damage. So if you're starting to build up a bleed um, bar on you, you can use this to lower your bleed. Um, in addition, there are two other items that you can get from in two other versions of Moss Clumps. There's uh, basically a purple one 
and a blooming uh, purple one. The uh, blooming purple one looks kind of white and uh, it'll actually uh, uh, heal you for toxin, whereas the purple one will heal you for poison. Both of which are things we'll have to deal with a little bit later. So um, I will suggest, you know, at some point you might want to consider stocking up on them. You can f farm this area for them if you'd like. So we got an enemy coming our way. Go ahead and kill him. Hey, we got the purple one. So you got two choices. Um, you can either go that path, and that'll take you to uh, the area with the moonlight butterfly, or we can go this path, and uh, that's going to take us over to the Hydra. Um, I personally think that the Hydra is easier to deal with. Some people like to go that way and deal with the Moonlight Butterfly. And while the Moonlight Butterfly is easy, the actual trek to the Moonlight Butterfly isn't that easy. So um, I'm going to recommend that we take this path first, but either one is technically fine. We're going to head down here. And when we get to the beach, you'll see uh, why I recommend going here first. It's mainly because we're going to get some night armor. And then once we go towards the um, Moonlight Butterfly, we'll get the Elite Night Armor. Just feels kind of weird to get the Elite Night Armor before we get the actual Night Armor. But hey. So I got another Crystal Lizard to deal with. Hey, we got the Rare Drop, which is going to be all four items. Cool. Uh, we're going to head down here. And there are two paths here. We're going to take the upper of the two paths because we'll be able to get a longbow as well as a new gear set. So leather gear and a longbow. So this path, if you keep going, is going to head to the Hydra. We're going to make a right here, though. Because this actually takes us to a bonfire. However, we do have to face a Black Knight. This time, one with a Halberd. And right behind him is a Bonfire. So I recommend getting him to come up here. Um, in my opinion, these ones are the hardest ones to parry. So I don't recommend it unless you happen to be really good at parries. But you can still backstab them just the same. I actually am uh, really interested to do a halberd based build in this game. I might have to do that in my next playthrough. Alright, so he gives you blue titanite chunk as usual. He has about a 20% chance to drop his, uh, 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 his halberd and like a 2% chance or something, something really low uh, to drop his... Um, his shield. For now, they're go we're going to go ahead and head back down. And this is the Grass Crest Shield. So let's go take a look at that real quick. So the Grass Crest Shield has 95% physical damage reduction. So it uh, will not block all physical damage, but it does have higher fire reduction. So really good if you're dealing uh, with fire. Um, I will say there are better for fire, though, um, so consider that for later. But uh, its main claim to fame is the fact that it has slightly improved stamina recovery, so it'll actually increase your stamina recovery whenever you have it equipped. So that can be a real boon for certain fights. In this case, though, we're going to go ahead and head in here. And here is our bonfire. And no souls. But I do have enough to do one level up. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue down this path for a moment because there is a shortcut we're going to unlock here. We'll be coming back through that area a little later. Um, the opposite end, in fact. For now, though, we're going to go ahead and head out here. And we're heading back up. <laughs> so 
So there's the Hydra, but before we do that, we're going to unlock a shortcut and deal with a guy named Havel. Or I should say, talk about a shortcut. So this leads to a uh, the, the tower, basically, uh, that right, right after you basically got out of the top of this tower, you ran into the Taurus Demon. So um, if you've got the master key, you can come in here now, but you'll have to face a guy named Havel. Um, kind of up to you if you want to deal with him, but it is a shortcut. In this case, though, I'm going to play as if you didn't, do not have the master key. So these guys um, have a few swing attacks. They'll also pound the ground. They also have this uh, kind of big jump whenever you're further away from them. And then they'll also turn their arm into, um, what do you call it, uh, crystals. So the ground pound is really the only attack that's a little bit of a big deal. Um, they do a pretty healthy amount of damage though, so just be aware of that. <coughs> So we want to uh, convince these enemies to come to us because uh, she's going to start firing water jets at us and we uh, we don't want to be attacked by those while we're trying to kill enemies. So Their ground pound, by the way, will actually inflict um, some curse damage on you. That being said, they don't do it enough to actually cause regular curse, but there's the stuff. And that's because these guys, I think, are related to um, Seat the Scaleless, which is a boss that can actually inflict curse with his scales. So you can hang out behind a tree. Don't stay right up on the tree, though, because the impact will actually do damage to you. We got one more of these crystal things to deal with. And then we'll talk boss strategy. It's a very good chance she'll kill them on her own. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk boss strategy. So um, what you want to do is uh, you want to have some fire bombs for this fight. We haven't really been using any of them up to this point. Um, you can also use arrows, but uh, fire bombs will be faster. Um, so you probably still have some arrows left from previous. Uh, you probably still have some fire bombs unless you've been um, using them. I'm going to recommend the fire bombs though. And then we're going to want to go ahead and change out our blue tear stone ring for this to the rusted iron ring. So, um, what's going to happen is we're basically going to need to make a run for that beach. And in particular, you can just catch the item on the beach right there. Uh, that is actually the night gear, and it's basically sitting in the water just at the water line. And if we can make it there, um, she won't shoot uh, this crap at us anymore. She'll actually switch to pounding the ground with her various heads. And in my opinion, that's a lot easier to deal with rather than trying to tank these uh, shots from her. Uh, that being said, I recommend kind of staying to the right hand side of this area um, because we can get behind trees and, uh, and basically avoid getting hit by her water jets. Now, if you are right behind a tree like this, um, the impact will actually still get you. So as you're kind of getting behind a tree, stay around maybe this far away that way you don't get actually hit by it. And then, um, again, we're just gonna make a run for it and kind of try to stay behind the trees uh, if we can. Uh, once we get down to the water line, we're going to basically hold block um, at the water line while we're sit standing inside the water. If we go too deep, we'll actually uh, die, so we cannot swim, unfortunately. Um, that being said, I'll kind of mark off where you can't go once we get down there. 
and then um, as she's pounding the uh, the beach with her heads, we're just going to hold uh, the block button, and then once she pounds the beach, we'll run towards the heads and basically try to bash them and see if we can, uh, can kill them. So I'm going to go ahead and make a run for it. And there's the night gear. So now she's going to pound the beach. Old block because uh, she will get you with it, but shouldn't be that big of a deal. If you have trouble figuring out where the heads are landing, by the way, hold block and then tilt the camera back. That way you can get a better view of where they're landing. So stay about where this corpse is that we got the item from. There's one head. There's another head. And another head. So yeah, as long as you stay in the water, they will not get you with the water jets. And there's another head. And another head. I can't believe I missed that one. Alrighty, so we got one head left. And this is where this one tries to convince you to get uh, closer to it. Um, I'm putting up my shield right now and kind of shaping where the water line is. I can just barely see the difference in the color of the uh, of the water line, but it's there. So right away where, where my shield is, I'm kind of sh using the edge of the shield to shape it, is where the water line is. So once you go beyond that point, you die. So. What we're actually going to do now is we're going to switch to the firebombs. If you've got black firebombs, you can uh, hit them with two of them. If you hit the head specifically, uh, you'll be you'll be good. Otherwise, switch to your arrows and you can deal with them that way too. So there's one. And there's the other. Okay, so, we just got a couple of items. Uh, the dragon scale is kind of important, because this is our first dragon scale. Once you have dragon skills in your inventory, you become eligible to be invaded by one of the covenants. We'll talk more about that covenant whenever we get the opportunity to actually join them ourselves. 
But uh, that covenant is basically all about dragon scales. And the idea is that uh, anyone who's a part of that covenant will leave a summon pad on the ground, typically near areas that are commonly where, where dragon scales are commonly found. So you'll probably find one on the beach here, for example, for people. Uh, you may find them near uh, an area in Blight Town where we're going to see another dragon scale. Uh, there's a few other places that people often put them for this particular covenant. But basically, uh, whenever you uh, go over to one of those pads, uh, you can basically duel that person. And whoever wins the duel will get another dragon scale. So uh, regardless of whether you're the person who is a member or not. So it's always a good idea to participate in it. That being said, dragon we uh, dragon scale weapons are, or dragon scales are used to upgrade dragon scale weapons. So the Drake Sword, for example, that's a dragon weapon. We can upgrade that using dra dragon scales. So uh, definitely good to have. Just be aware that it, this does open you up to some invasions because now we have a dragon scale in our inventory. In addition, we also got Dusk's Ring. Uh, Dusk grants extra magic castings, but halves the eight, your HP. So uh, if you're a magic caster, you're probably going to prioritize magic castings. So definitely a good ring to have. Um, we're actually about to meet Dusk. So we're going to go ahead and head along the water line up to this uh, waterfall here. And then we're going to make a right. So you're normally meant to um, go rest at a bonfire first before you do this, but we can trigger the enemy that's back here to trigger by quitting the game. So I'm going to go ahead and quit the game. And there is... One of the another golem. This one is a little tougher, but not by much. He actually has shorter range for his uh, ground pound attack, but he does have um, he does have more. Well, you just saw that. <laughs> he uh, he has a really wide sweep of a punch, and he'll do uh, kind of an uppercut too. That one can do a pretty healthy amount of damage. Otherwise, this guy just has a lot of health. He's not particularly dangerous. As long as you've got a shield. There's the ground pound. Again, not nearly the... What do you call it? Uh, the range that the other one has. Oh, I asked for that. So you'll see, by the way, the thing on the uh, on the thing's shoulder. This uh, this woman, Dusk, was actually trapped in that crystal on top of its shoulder. Uh, this is a woman from a place called Ulaseel. We're going to go ahead and say yes to her, and then she's going to disappear. So Ulaseel is basically a location that's related to the Artorius of the Abyss DLC. So, in my opinion, some of the best fights in this game and in gaming period. Four boss battles. That path, by the way, going up there, uh, that actually leads to Sif. It also leads to the Dark Root Forest, which is a hot spot for invasions. We'll go there a little bit later. So you're going to notice this summon sign on the ground. Uh, unlike the summon signs we've run into up to this point, this one does not require you to be human. Also, if there are any enemies around here, uh, don't activate her summon sign because she can die. So she'll introduce herself. We'll go ahead and talk to her and she'll tell you, tell you a little bit about her plight. She apparently has been trapped in that golem for a long time. You got a gesture to learn. 
And she's got a few things that she sells. So uh, she sells a catalyst. So if you're a magic user, more specifically an intelligence-based magic user, uh, not a bad catalyst. And then um, she also has a few spells. Um, nothing all that good for, you know, someone like us who's not a magic build, but uh, definitely something to consider if you are interested in magic. That being said, though, we are done with that. We're going to go ahead and head back to where the golem was. And we're actually going to find her gear. Speaking of which, you'll probably notice that we haven't been upgrading any of our actual armor. You really don't need to upgrade your armor in this game if you don't want to. That being said, though, uh, I would basically just wait until you get armor that you like. There are a few armors that will help you with, like, fire damage and stuff like that, but... Uh, this game very much becomes Fashion Souls, as, uh, as the community tends to call it. So here is her gear. And now we're going to head back to the bonfire. And then that will actually wrap up this episode. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and equip the Knight Helm. And we still have a good roll, so I'm going to go ahead and equip blue tear stone ring now that we're out of the water. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and head back. I'm going to spend some souls, talk a little bit about what we're going to do in the next episode. Okie dokie, so we are officially up to 20 on Vitality and Endurance. We're going to start leveling up into Dexterity and then get Strength and Dexterity up to 20 as well. So we're at level 25 at this point, and from here, uh, in the next episode, we're going to end up uh, hitting the Moonlight Butterfly. So that's going to be our next boss. Um, and then I think probably in the same episode... We're going to go ahead and tackle the Capra Demon. Uh, the undead, uh, the lower undead burg is actually a pretty small area. Um, so I think I'm probably going to combine the next two bosses into one episode. But with that out of the way, thanks everybody for watching. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, leave it here. So um, hope to see you all in the next one. And uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and uh, take it easy, everyone. Bye.